all third. The, the movie? Yeah. Oh, okay. But so it was through the media of the movie. Okay. Not quite fiction, but yeah. And who else? Yeah, but we know that's because you have no imagination. That's okay. <laughs> I know Dave, so that's right. So for me, I, I really think that uh, the medium of science fiction is a great method to expose people to the idea of you know space, space exploration and technology. I mean, the same way that you know I find that I've been inspired, and most of the people here, I think, you know, have been inspired. And so I wanted to do was have kind of a discussion with folks about what it is that they find you know, inspiring, say, in current science fiction or in the past that they think is really useful or, you know, could be uh, kind of a good medium to bring other folks into the fold. Because I think the end goal, right, of all of us here at Space Up um, in getting together like this is not just, as, you know, some people may use the term mutual masturbation, oh, we all love space, that's so great, what's, you know, what's the big deal? You know, we want more people to love space as much as we do so that things like NASA's budget getting cut and, you know, uh, the lack of a shuttle, the lack of proper space exploration is actually more of a p problem, you know, that more people in the public domain actually go, they're not going to stand for this, right? Because if it was up to us, forget it, right? You know, we know what we'd be doing right now. But the problem is the general public doesn't feel that way, right? And I think one of the ways, you know, I'm not talking about some great public outreach or, you know, anything else like that, but kind of using common culture and the, you know, cultural medium. So I'm curious... Let me just see from some folks here, like, what is it that you guys have found most inspiring, say, in the medium of science fiction, and you think would be, you know, good to bring people in, either books or movies or, you know, TV shows, et cetera? And, of course, Alex, go ahead. Well, I thought you, asked, you might have asked two different questions, but um, the first thing is that going and it shows you all the ways that uh, we need space for energy, for security, for communication, for, uh, as a subset, location information, but secondly, we see how all these the, the three things, space migration, intelligence increase, and life extension, are all actually all interrelated. And I wouldn't have known about those connections, which are very clear, if I hadn't read a thousand stories of science fiction and sort of pieced it together like Sherlock Holmes. Your top, you know, two or three, you would say, two or three. Well, sure. Uh, I would say the um, uh, Hyperion and Endymion, the, the, basically the four, the Hyperion Cantos. Uh, I have yet to recommend that to someone without having them come back and grab me and say, oh my God, that was so fucking good. It was amazing. Um, the second thing I would say is this, the books by Peter Hamilton, like uh, The Fallen Dragon, which you know is sort of a wish fulfillment thing, but shows space and time together. And uh, I also uh, think that, I don't know, there's a book of space opera stories uh, or, oh, oh, you wanted series, okay, uh, David Brin's Uplift series. And then if I had to go one more, I would say that the most transformative series I've ever read in my life is the Foundation series, where if you count the robot novels and the Foundation books and the three by, bin, by the th Killer Bees, that's 13 books. But after you've gone through 2,500 pages, it's like you live from the zeroth law. And actually, I guess I should add, so for me, uh, I've read tons of books, sci-fi, you know, movies and stuff, and so a lot of what, you know, uh, Alex has mentioned, you know, Asimov, and you've got all your kind of sci-fi authors, Greg Bear, Benford, Brin, and then uh, one that stuck in my head recently, uh, Werner Vinge, if you guys haven't read anything by him, uh, Deepness in the Sky, Fire Upon the Deep were really kind of uh, uh, amazing books. And uh, in case you guys haven't heard, I you know, self-describe myself as a futurist, as do a lot of people here. And a book that I thought that was really interesting by him that was kind of more of a near future kind of book, but really interesting, is Rainbow's End, which is an adaptation of a short story that he wrote. It's kind of about wearable technology and kind of near future stuff, not necessarily space, but obviously leading to that. And, uh, you know, as, as you can guess, I find shows like, you know, Star Trek, very inspiring, Babylon 5, if you guys haven't seen those, um, you know, things like that. And then obviously, you know, movies that come out, though, you know, some, some stuff, I don't know if I would call Star Wars science fiction, I would honestly call it more fantasy, right, but, and, or space opera. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a big argument we can have there, but I, I like stuff that have a little more of the science 
um, aspect of it, uh, which is also why I'm a big fan of, for example, the Stargate series, right, which tries to deal with kind of like how humans would explore space. So, Dave, you had a comment? Yep. All right. Yeah, there's 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 an interesting class. Um, if you look, I think from what I've seen, sci-fi authors usually were kind of doing this sort of far future, like galactic spanning civilization stuff that you know may or may not happen. There's been a sort of a recent trend in authors to kind of do more kind of near future stuff, whether it's space or not, where it's kind of like let's just extrapolate 10, 20, 30 years in the future or so and try and you know control the variables because after longer amounts of times it's impossible to almost predict. And so you've got authors where, you know, civilization looks mostly like it does today, but they've, you know, advanced a few things forward. Like Charles Strauss has some very interesting books that he's written. He's a very good, uh, you know, science fiction author. So if you want to check out someone that may be a little more accessible, he's got some stuff. And I see someone writing down notes, which is great. Because the idea here is to, like, Acceleron, of course, Accelerando. The idea here is just, like, you know, let's all exchange information, yeah, and then, you know, give each other recommendations and hopefully go out and maybe inspire other people, too. Ah, okay. StarCraft. Yep. Oh, yeah. What, what about uh, StarCraft or Halo? No, exactly. Go ahead. Ah, yeah. Yep. Very cool. So I had a, a interesting question for you guys, I'm, and I'm kind of curious about this, but how many people here think that an alien invasion could be actually the best thing that happens to the planet? I'm curious. Ra show of hands. How many people think it would be bad? Okay, of course. But for the people who, who could think it would be good, what, what was the reason you raised your hand for that? It, history has proven that. Yeah. Any other reason? What's that? I was say, yeah, you got it. yeah, I mean, a common theme you'll see through any alien invasion story, and, and this is true if you look at it historically in terms of human society, is it's always about having someone else that's more different than the people you're with. Right. I mean, that's where current divisions come from, you know, first in you know, our little social groups and then, you know, eventually big political enemies and now countries, racial, ethnic groups. But when an alien comes down and starts killing you, all of a sudden that other human being that looked really different to you looks a whole lot more similar than this crazy alien bastard. Right. Who's like bombing and shooting you. Right. So from that standpoint, it's always been an interesting theme to me that, you know, when you read and see like Falling Skies, this new series on you know, TNT that you see now, it's, uh, you know, oh, the aliens have come and all of a sudden we're united in the brotherhood of humanity. Now, of course, if we get our asses kicked by the aliens, it doesn't matter because then we're going to be extinct. But, hey, there could be a bright side to the to the dark cloud, right? Oh, uh, you're, yes, exactly, exactly. No, and I mean, that's the question, right? 
do we actually figure out that we need to stop doing that, or are we going to be stupid and you know basically help our hasten our own extinction? Yep. That's, uh, uh, he was asking, do we need to develop counters to the infected blankets of al the aliens, likening the alien invasion to the, you know, invasion of the Europeans of the New World, right, spreading smallpox and all that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I just I threw that out as kind of a, an interesting thought. I mean, I, I think that the other interesting aspect of sci-fi is that, though in the past it seems it had kind of been denigrated a little. You know, it used to be when I was a kid and I was reading sci-fi, it's like, oh, you're reading sci-fi. Like, it's not real literature, right? There's definitely very good works of science fiction. And nowadays, as technology has become more advanced, it seems as if there's less of that. I mean, it's kind of you know, part of that futurist aspect that I talk about, the rate of accelerating change is just getting so great. Everyone kind of needs to get up with technology, right? You know, you've got your mobile phones, you've got your internet, you know, wireless access everywhere. You know, what did we do before Google, right? And then the idea is that as, you know, sci-fi, I think, can help sort of broaden people's horizons, right? That, you know, you start thinking about things that you never would have considered before. And that's the beauty of science fiction. And like I said, I, I'm, you know, preferential more to the science fiction that's more based in science, right? So that's where, sorry, you, you had a comment? Yeah, just uh, that is more based in science because then there's at least some more, you know, relevant uh, kind of lessons I think we can learn from that. I mean, for example, just one th thought that was in my head is talking about kind of, you know, extrapolating out differences. There was a really good series. It doesn't have anything to do with space, but we're talking about sci-fi uh, by Nancy Kress called The Sleepless. And it was actually a very interesting series because it dealt with what would happen if we engineered the need for sleep out of people. And just think about that. Like, it would completely, completely overthrow the way current society works because there would be some people who would not need sleep. So imagine how much more productive they would be, how much more fulfilled they will be. And then there would be the people who didn't. And then what would happen then as a result? You know, and of course, there's never going to be, like, if you imagine that in 10 years in the future, one variable change such that that's the only thing that's different, you know, versus today. So it's hard to tell how it'll all come around. But, you know, it's, it's sort of thought experiments like that, counterfactuals like that, that. That's the reason I love science fiction. So, but yeah, you had a comment? It's interesting. I actually haven't read them, and I've read a lot of folks. Oh. Mm -hmm. I actually I liked it too for as long as it lasted. Interesting. I'll have to check that out, Alex. Interesting. So, uh, anyone else seen that? Seeing that? I, that's, I hadn't known about that, about the movie. And I remember seeing the preview and I was like, I'm not going to go see that. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's going to be one of those for all of them. So, any other inspiring, uh, you know, science fiction books, authors, movies, topics, anything? Oh, yeah. Movie, uh, that's definitely one of the best has everyone here seen it who's seen it raise your hands okay who hasn't seen it raise your hands district nine you no imagination see proves it so district nine is an incredible movie that was made two three years ago was it it's by peter jackson the guy you know who directed lord of the rings and he'd been working on it for a while and it's about sorry 
he produced it. Direct, produce, eh, same thing. Yeah, and the point is, it is an incredibly good movie, ignoring any of the sort of science fiction aspects of it. But on top of it, there's you know aliens, and they come to the planet, and stuff happens. And the thing about it that blew my mind is, it's one of the most well written movies because it took a character in the beginning that I absolutely despised. I literally wanted to kill him, and made him one of the most like you know lovable people. And it was just an amazing transition and, and incredible writing. And you should definitely go out and see it. It's very, very good. Marketing culture? No. Mm-hmm. Creating a commercializing science fiction world. Science if you fiction look at the world. Top 300 grossing movies of all time. Mm. Over 95% of them are American made science fiction movies. If you count the you know, full realization of special effects in there as well, like the tribe that they do forward. So you mean comic book movies included or Pardon? comic book movies and all of that oh, kind of, of stuff? Yep. Go ahead. The stigma associated with the term science fiction. Twilight Zone. Yeah, really well, actually, I'm curious. So, how many other, how many people think there is still some sort of stigma associated with the idea of science fiction? How many people are are fine, you know, telling you know other normals? You know, folks who don't, who aren't here, who won't understand. Oh, you read science fiction, or I like sci-fi, yeah. mundanes, normals, muggles. We can we can use all these terms interchangeably. But so uh, Alex, I believe, uh, thinks he has an explanation for this. Go ahead. So in the last couple minutes, what do people think might be some ways or strategies? I mean, it's interesting, too, because, say, for example, we talk about science fiction. I mean, I'm just thinking and noticing it's really interesting, for example, taking a very small subgroup, comic books, right? If anything, comic books are more marginalized, right, than, say, sci-fi is, right? It's like, who reads comic books still? But if you think about it, some of the top grossing movies of all time nowadays, and, you know, currently, how many comic book movies are out? It's very interesting to me because it's like, People will go see these movies, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know, oh, no, I don't read comic books, but I'll go watch Iron Man, you know, that kind of thing. So it's interesting. So out of curiosity, what do people think are some strategies for maybe helping with the science fiction stigma, if there is any? I don't know. Does anyone have any thoughts? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you have a comment? Mm. I thought they'd been talking about it, but then there's always talks in Hollywood about making everything and anything and whether it happens or not. Oh, let's not mention that name in here, please. <laughs> Anyone else? Any thoughts? Comments? I think we've pretty much come... Ah, go ahead.
Yep, yep. What else? All right, and one more. Go ahead. Exactly. Amen. And I will leave you guys with one last thing. So uh, just leaving you guys with, you know, I opened with Star Trek The Next Generation, closing with Babylon 5. If you guys haven't seen it, definitely watch it. Great, great show. Thank you very much for coming, guys. Appreciate it.